is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel, hanging out with Morgan and Michelle. Today, they're gonna give us a tour of a 2017 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter custom camper van. So join us. Hey Patrick, thanks so much for having us on your program. Uh, my name's Morgan. I'm Michelle. And this is our 2017 Mercedes Sprinter van. Uh, this is a 170 chassis, uh, not the extended version, two-wheel drive with a three-liter diesel engine. Uh, this is the passenger variant that actually started life in limo service and uh, when we bought it we you know, basically gutted it and you know, started fresh on this build. Um, stepping up to the van, the first thing you'll probably notice is you know, that we've got side steps on here. These are uh, van and brand side steps that um, after doing our research we found that it felt like you know, the most convenient um, spacing between the, the ground and the, the next step up and in. It feels um, like you're stepping in naturally right? compared like to some other upstairs. brands that we tested out. Yep. As you step inside, the first thing you notice is the, the, the cabinets here. Um, these are made entirely of Baltic birch plywood uh, with you know, poplar frames on the, uh, the drawers and doors. Um, you'll also notice the really open floor plan, which we loved about this 170 chassis. It just feels like, you know, so spacious so that if you're you know, spending an extended period of time in the van, you don't feel too cramped. You look coming up into the van, you'll see that we have um, the luxury vinyl plank flooring. Uh, this is over top of um, a plywood base with um, extruded aluminum uh, floor joists that um, provide enough room for one inch expanded foam uh, insulation. Um, up front, we have um, Alpine Mechanism swivel seats, uh, which you will also help to open up the space and you know give you additional seating. You can see that we've added uh, some custom cup holders up there because if anyone has spent any time driving in one of these older sprinters, you'll know that cups don't stay in the factory ones. Up above, we have the uh, the Boss 10-inch head unit, which is Apple CarPlay and Google Android compatible. And if you look up over the driver's seat, you'll see that we left the uh, the visor shelf accessible, and then we built this large um, cab uh, over cab cabinet up here um, for storing large items. Uh, this is supported on steel brackets that are mounted directly into the vehicle body, leaving the uh, the side curtain airbags intact. Um, up here in the ceiling, we have tongue and groove cedar that has been sealed in shellac and gives this beautiful color. Um, and then um, warm white LED lights running down through the middle. Throughout the van, we have Havelock wool insulation um, you know, on the ceiling and the walls. And as I mentioned, we've got the uh, foam board insulation underneath. Um, moving back, we have um, our dinette area. Uh, we have a, a T-vent window here made by Hare, uh, which you know both of the panels will open up and provide lots of ventilation. Um, we've got a lagoon table and then um, custom benches with storage underneath, you know, full slide uh, drawers, again made out of Baltic birch with uh, dado and rabbit joints, you know, making them extremely strong and positive catches to keep anything from moving around. Underneath we have electrical, uh, both AC and DC back there. Another feature of this dinette is that with it being a lagoon table, we can take the tabletop off and drop it down to the same level as the benches. We can put in a third cushion here and by swiveling the driver's seat around, we have another bed for a guest who might be staying with you. Up above, we have additional cabinet storage with gas struts to support it. Uh, magnet catches again to help keep things closed. We have LED strip lighting here that's dimmable. Up above us, we have one of the Max Fan Deluxe fans. We originally started off with two of these fans, one in front and one in back. After spending a little bit of time in you know, East Coast humidity, we realized that an air conditioner made a lot of sense. So we replaced the rear one with a pneumatic cooling 3000 uh, 12 volt air conditioner that draws, I believe about 50 amps at uh, maximum boost and significantly less at eco mode. Moving down to the kitchen area, uh, this is, I believe, a 76 inch long uh, kitchen cabinet, which is much larger than you get in most of these fan builds. Uh, we have a single element induction cooktop that's you know, flush with the surface, a stainless steel sink with a cutting board cover, and a retractable faucet that can be swung out the door if you need to spray off. 
Moving down, this is the Isotherm Freeline 115 refrigerator, which has one of the largest freezers available in a refrigerator this size. And we have tested it. You can fit a full box of ice cream in there with plenty of space to spare. We have lots of storage over here in the kitchen, starting with a tilt-out drawer here in front of the sink. We've got cabinet storage here and another large drawer down here if you wanted to store pots and pans. Again, more storage under the dinette bench here with a slide that stops just short of touching the refrigerator door. Coming back here, we've got we have more drawers and tucked in this cabinet, we have a trash can, something that a lot of people kind of forget in their builds. One of the things we love about starting with a passenger van is that we had lots of windows to work with. So when somebody is sitting here working at the kitchen, not only do you have full visibility out the door, but you also have visibility out through the windows. We have our electrical control panel here with remotes for the air conditioner, the fan. Uh, this is the control for the diesel heater that is tucked underneath the passenger seat made by uh, SBAR. This is the, uh, the Victron touchscreen controller. And then up at the top, we have a timer for the water heater so that you don't accidentally leave it running and draw more energy than necessary. And then a toggle switch here for an electric dump valve for the gray water tank mounted underneath the van. We have more drawers below. A shallow drawer here that you know, leaves room for the wheel well. And then up above, more cabinets for kitchen storage. You know, you've got you know, no divider here, so you can put long items in there if you need to. We have our AC and DC breaker panels up here and little thumb screws that allow you to take the, the panel off if you need to. There's additional cabinets in the back, which were you know, thought to be you know, clothing storage. And then down here, we went with the, uh, the flare space flyweight system for the bed. So we have a large mattress, or it's actually queen size, um, 60 inches wide and 79 and a half inches long at the back of the flares. Um, and that's mounted on, it's like a corrugated plastic panel that, you know, is rated for you know plenty of weight. Um, we've got the the flare space flares on both sides, along with their fiberglass trim rings, and then we have reading lights mounted up over top of the uh, the heads end of the bed with USB jacks on those as well. Moving forward on the driver's side, we have a large wardrobe cabinet. Yeah, and we also have storage for a small ladder to help get up into the bed if necessary. Um, more storage down here. And also you can take a peek at your water level if you need to. Although that is also visible on the color touch screen because I have float valves in both the freshwater and gray water tank. And then moving to the bathroom, which is you know kind of the crown jewel of this build. Um, something that pushed us to this layout. We've gone with interlocking um, vinyl tiles on the walls with um, red guard painted on the surface behind that so it's fully waterproof. This is a 24 by 36 shower pan giving you lots of room to stand in there and you know um, this fixture is made by Groey. Um, this is something that we saw on a, a Royal Caribbean cruise and fell in love with it. Um, so you have one knob that will control the, the water temperature and another one that will control the flow making it much easier to take a, a shower that conserves water. Uh, right now we have a cassette toilet in here. Um, you know, it just seemed to work better for us than some of the composting ones. And if you need the room for, you know, the shower, this can be removed and set in the aisle. Closing the shower, we have one of the Nautilus doors. And then the lights inside have a dimmer dial on them, so if you need to use the restroom at night, you won't disturb your partner. All of the wall panels, you know, throughout the van are quarter-inch Baltic birch, you know, giving a really nice finished look. Stepping outside of the van, um, one last look at the, the kitchen here. You can see that we added vent panels because the refrigerator in there. Uh, there's an intake down low and then an exhaust up high. Up above us, we've got a, I believe it's 12-foot awning, uh, which provides a lot of shade here helping to keep the van cool. Moving back, you can see that we coated the rocker panels with uh, bed liner, you know, to help prevent uh, damage from stone chips. 
Um, we've replaced the wheels with Method 301s, uh, running Falcon Wild Peak um, all-terrain tires in a uh, 265-70 R17 size and E-rated uh, load rating. Um, we've got brackets here for the awning, so that if you're on um, you know, a bit of a slope, you don't have to rely on setting the legs on the ground. You can just fasten them right into the van wall. And then there's 30 amp shore power here, um, if you have that available at a campground per se. Up on the roof, uh, of course, there's the air conditioner, but there's also four Zamp Obsidian 100-watt uh, uh, solar panels you know, for a total of 400 watts. Um, that all feeds into the electrical system down here. There are four 100 amp hour, 12 volt Battleborn batteries in the upper compartment. And then in the lower compartment, we have the Victron components. We've got the Cherubal GX, which talks to that touch screen. We have the smart solar um, charger connected to the panels above. And in the forward part, we have a Lynx distributor and the main power switch. Back here we have the Victron Multi Plus 3000 and a disconnect for the solar. The garage is fully lined with uh, rubber coin flooring and the bed height was set such that you can put full-size mountain bikes in here. And if for some reason you needed to carry something large, this is a hinged mattress and lightweight removable bed panels so you could take these out and have this entire you know five foot deep garage area. On the opposite side is the plumbing system. This is a 30 gallon uh, freshwater tank that wraps around the wheel well. Uh, we've got an ISO temp uh, four gallon hot water heater, which will heat the water to about 180 degrees and then mix it with cold water, you know, to bring it back down to, you know, a comfortable 100, 105 degrees, you know, giving you far more capacity than th that four gallons. Uh, we have additional storage in here. Um, you know, for the wash down hose, the, the fill hose, and the, uh, the pump and accumulator and stuff are mounted up on top of the tank. In the back here, we've got additional electrical, both AC and DC, and then the fill and the wash down ports are aqua uh, zero leak fittings, you know, so you can disconnect the hose while it's still under pressure. Moving around the back, We've got a full-size spare tire mounted on an Owl Vans tire carrier. Thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome creation. Now, this was a first-time build, and it's pretty spectacular. I like the fit and finish, the layout is excellent, and the feature level is pretty spot on. Now, what's the background? Because would you build houses before this? Because this is great. Um, I had some experience doing um, home renovations and such. You have basic carpentry and plumbing and electrical work. Uh, but you know, really had to do my research before um, you know diving into some of these projects like building cabinets. But you're also you are a welding engineer, so you bring some of that to the table as well. Because even sure. if it's not, even if you didn't have to do any welding, there still were relevant ideas and knowing how things would work together. I think made a big difference as well. Yeah, and we originally came across the idea. It was fall of 2020. We were hiking. At the hiking trailhead parking lot, there was a couple there that had this gorgeous van and all built out. And we we're like, that would be so amazing, especially during COVID, to have something like that where you could just travel around and not have to interact too much with people because, you know, during COVID, that was nerve wracking. And so that kind of sparked the whole idea and got us looking, looking at vans and builds and yeah. learning more about it. Yeah, we researched for a couple months and looked at the used market. And when we found this van, um, you know, I mentioned it was a um, former, you know, limo use van, but the passenger configuration. Um, it has 101,000 miles on it, but you know, these diesel engines will last forever. Um, and the van was in great shape, so we didn't feel bad about you know buying something with that high of mileage. Um, you know, since then we've been getting about 18 miles per gallon with the, the diesel, so it's been fantastic. Now you built it, it's done, you've been using it. What's next? Uh, honestly, we had so much fun building it that I think we might start on another one. Well, it is beautiful. And I know if you list it for sale, I think you're gonna get a lot of attracted buyers. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much.